let's look at the self-storage and auction business. So first, first off, read this disclaimer carefully and do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. The interesting thing about this theme is that it gives us, you know, a hint about um, the the health of the economy because uh, you know the need, uh, the demand for self storage and auction services will definitely change quite dr uh, drastically uh, with uh, you know the economy. Uh, we do see that there's a huge move here from uh, the low, uh, ten percent average uh, pullback. We will look at life storage. They are in the self storage business, uh, seventy seven ish percent here from the low, basically at the highs. So if we go here, and this is you know the company's website, but it it is quite you know self explanatory. A very basic uh, you know business uh, model. Yeah, so you can see that you know it's uh, climate controlled. Uh, you can store vehicles, business storage boxes, supplies, they have uh, contact-free storage rentals. So if we go here to the chart, uh, something just interesting uh, popped up on, you know, the radar as I was scanning through, you know, uh, the interesting candidates. So here is the weekly RSI and uh, we have one of the highest readings ever for live storage. This is absolutely extreme. Uh, when we look at in this instance, we did see a pullback to the green 50 week moving average. In this instance, we also actually pull back to the 50 week. In this instance, um, we will pull, we pull basically pulled back, uh, pulled back to multiple moving averages. Though this here was from a very low level. You know, this was, you know, after the dot com bubble. So the, so the context is definitely different. But basically the RSI is absolutely extreme. If we look at you know other you know indicators, let's look here at uh, the PPO. So the current PPO it is um, extremely high. Here we had you know a similar PPO. We did see a pullback to the green 50-week moving average. In this instance, we did have a protracted period of high PPO, which eventually led to a pullback to the blue 100-week moving average. But here again, you know on the PPO we have a very very extreme reading, which means that there, this is very high risk for the bulls. Historically, this doesn't tend to work out. For the bulls, that is. I mean, there usually are these deeper pullbacks. So here are the daily data points. PPL, uh, the same message, you know, uh, record, we have a record. Uh, we have never been this far away. Uh, well, we haven't been at least uh, this far away from the 200 day moving average since a very, very, very long time ago. ago. RSI as well, we reached absolutely extreme uh, readings. You see here that we tend to have, you know, rather frequent pullbacks where we explore the low part of the RSI. So the odds here do not favor the bulls. Uh, let's explore further. So here we have the seasonality. I didn't find any reliable time cycles, so I'm not going to... There's no point in painting in time cycles if we do not have good time cycles. Over the last 10 years, June has been uh, one of the weakest uh, months. Uh, then you have August, September, a bit mediocre. Looking over the last 20 years, which is beneficial in that we also get some bear markets uh, as part of the data, then you do see that there is this clear weakening from March heading towards June. So basically, the current month is not ideal for bulls, especially with these obscene uh, readings. Here, in you know, Finvis, we are way above the trend channel. Buying the low end of the trend channel has been a good risk reward opportunity. The upper end, and especially, especially exploding outside of the trend channel, that is that is high risk for the bulls. This is like their lad, the euphoric move, but this is only fun if you got in on a low level, because then you can have like a trailing stop or something like that. But to even consider you know, entering a new bullish position here, that is just, yeah, that's not a good idea. That is the literal, literal opposite of buying a low and selling high. So the stock price is currently at $107. And in, if we look here at the most recent analyst price targets, we do have BMO Capital Markets. They feel, uh, they feel like $140 is fair. But you see that... Um, 
the consensus here seems to be when we look here at the mean price target that is at one hundred and four dollars, and the stock is currently you know, you know, that's the so the yeah that is you know three percent below the current stock price. Nothing dramatic, but that basically means that you know the stock is fairly valued. Uh, Sax has a three hold. Uh, style score is D value score, C growth, D momentum. So basically in line with what we saw here with uh, the analyst price targets. Industry rank is in the bottom 17%. It's a big company, 8 billion market cap and the dividend is 2.7%. Uh, so the dividend is definitively, you know, juicy. It's in the REIT, you know, category. But um, given that, you know, there's a tendency for this one to have frequent pullbacks to the to the green uh, 50 week moving average uh, you also of course have many pullbacks to the purple 20 week moving average and if we, we were to have just those basic pullbacks so from the current level down to the purple 20 week that is you know around 10 percent pullback if we are talking about the green 50 week moving average then we are definitively going to approach you know a 20 percent pullback from these highs. So taking all the evidence together, you know, given these readings, you know, the technicals, looking at, you know, the fundamentals, seasonality, uh, you name it, uh, this is not a good risk reward opportunity for bulls. This is, this is very interesting from a more speculative, bearish uh, perspective. Because uh, when you are looking for, you know, a candidate, you know, when designing uh, a market neutral portfolio, you want some bullish positions and you want bearish positions. And you want, of course, the risk reward to be in your favor. So this is the kind of logic that you can use, you know, look for readings uh, that have not worked for a certain party in the past. So in this instance, we get readings that... Um, have been very bad news for bulls in the past, which means that it makes sense to consider at least some temporary bearish uh, positions. Let's just look quickly at you know the S&P 500. So even though we have seen uh, you know some uh, some rotations uh, in, uh, in different uh, themes, uh, different sectors, the S&P as an index uh, hasn't had any uh, serious uh, correction. Uh, we have been um, riding this um, this uh, flashish uh, ten week moving average here for you know quite some time. If we go here to the daily data points, then you see that that is effectively the fifty day moving average here in green. That's been that key uh, level. But if we look at the history of the S and P five hundred, we start to go back in time. You see that we use far more moving averages. Um, you know, as support, uh, we explore, you know, the 200 day moving average even. If we go further back here, the 100 day moving average in blue and the 200 day, you know, they are frequently tested. Uh, that, that's, you know, the times where you have a bit of a repricing of the market and, uh, you know, bulls uh, can get in with a buffer. Because when you buy, you know, surgical support at the key moving average, you have a very nice, uh, you know, exit level. And when you get in uh, at, you know, a good level like uh, this, it makes it psychologically much easier to navigate uh, the markets as well because you have that buffer. So even though there are these pullbacks, uh, you know, even the pullback like this, you know, you still have that very, very nice uh, entry. And if you turn it into a habit of getting in uh, after pullbacks and uh, taking some profits when you have you have you know extreme uh, you know overbought readings and overvalued readings, uh, then um, you can generate very very substantial alpha.